Does anybody else this morning get a little bit of deja vu with this reading? Anyone? Didn't we just read this like three weeks ago, actually? Four weeks ago? I don't know exactly, but I know that we read it just a little bit ago. So here we are again at the beginning of Lent, and we're talking about Jesus' baptism. And don't sit down yet. You're going, you're going to be up here in just a second. I, I warned the ushers I'm going to need them, so they're prepared for me. So if you guys want to come on down, it's okay. That, we're here at the beginning of Lent talking about Jesus' baptism and Jesus being tempted. And my question is, is it Jesus being tempted or is it Jesus being tested? So first thing we're going to do this morning is take a test. So here you go. Pass this out to everybody. There's pencils in the box there if they need them. There's a place for your name. Write your name on it. Yes, I will be collecting them. Yes, I will be grading them. <laughs> Did any of your heart rates just go up? Have, any, have you studied for this test? Are you ready for this? <laughs> right? Did you catch the reading this morning? That it said that after Jesus came up out of the water, Mark is really good at using the word kaiethos. And in the Greek, kaiethos means and immediately. If you read the Gospel of Mark, you'll see that he likes to use those two words over and over again. But the thing that happens immediately after Jesus comes up out of the water is the Spirit drives him out into the wilderness. It is the Holy Spirit that takes Jesus out into the wilderness to have him be tested or tempted by Satan. Because you see, the word tested and tempted in the Greek is the same word. It's used in the Old Testament. In the Greek version of the Old Testament, when God tests Abraham to take his one and only son out onto the mountaintop to sacrifice him. Genesis chapter 22, God tested Abraham to see if he was willing to sacrifice his only son that he'd waited almost a hundred years for. Deuteronomy talks about us being tested by God. And each week we pray in the Lord's Prayer and lead us not into temptation. Do you think God leads us into temptation? I have one person over here brave enough to answer that question with a head shake. I would, I would say God leads us into testing. Yes, absolutely, 100%. And why do people give other people a test? Why does a driving instructor give the instructee a test? Aren't you glad that driver instructors give their instructees tests? Yes. Why do lawyers and physicians and CPAs and who else, pharmacists and have to pass tests before they can do what it is that they've studied to do? Because it's safer for us if they understand what it is that they're called to do. They're being tested on their knowledge. And no, I, I was only kidding earlier when I said I was going to grade these. I'm not actually going to grade these tests, so don't worry about it. But it gives you a test to see, and that's what God does, right? He tests us. Unless you want me to grade it, and then I can grade it. I mean, you know. He tests us on things. And then, to, to help us understand this a little bit, we have to look at this lesson and, and look at all of the other readings that come with it. It talks about, the other readings talk about the sign of the rainbow and the flood and baptism, right? God claimed us at this font, called us His children, and gave us a promise that He would always walk with us. Does that mean that everything's going to be smooth sailing? Does that mean our life is going to be a rose garden and that everything's going to be perfect? I look out over this, this congregation this morning and I see faces that I know that are dealing with things that nobody should have to deal with. But I guarantee you that while you walk through these things, that Christ is walking with you. God is always with us. That's the promise that we have. Even in the testing, God is always with us. There was once a seeker who went to a holy wise man 
he went to this wise man and he said, Holy man, how does one grow in holiness? The holy man said two words. The seeker said, Please, sir, tell me, what are these two words? The holy man said, Right choices. The seeker said, Holy man, how does one learn how to choose rightly? The holy man said, one word. And the seeker said, please tell me, what is this one word? And the holy man said, growth. And the seeker said, holy man, how does one then grow? And the holy man said, two words. Seeker said, please help me. Tell me what are these two words so that I can know how I can grow. And the holy man said, wrong choices. Right? How do we grow? How do we learn? You do something stupid. And you figure out, oh, I'm not supposed to do that. Right? It's not something that I should be doing. And do we really need to go out into the wilderness? to be tempted, to be given choices that we're going to choose the wrong thing to do? Do you really need somebody else's help to make the wrong choice? I know I don't. I don't need the devil to help me make a wrong choice. I can do it all on my own very, very plainly, right by myself, with nobody else's help. I can make the wrong choice. And if we're all honest with ourselves, the biggest enemy that we have in following what Christ has called us to do is ourselves. Right? Which is exactly why the Holy Spirit had to drive Jesus out into the wilderness. Because if given the choice, none of us are going to go through the testing, through the testing. None of us are going to want to go there. But none of us need the help of anybody else to make those wrong choices. Each and every one of us has a will to understand what is right and wrong. And knowing what is right and wrong doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to do what is right. We all have choices each and every day of our lives. We're all tested each and every day of our lives. And how do we come through that? We fall back and we lean on Christ. We fall back and we lean on the knowledge that no matter what happens, the promise always stands true. The promise that was made right here at this place always stands true. The rainbow in the sky gives us the proof that the promises of God stand true. That no matter what we do, no matter how far down we fall, that God is always there to reach his hand out for us. No matter how bad we screw up, that God is always there to be there for us. No matter how far down we get because of all of the circumstances of life around us, when we get so far down, the only place we have to look is up. It's not necessarily a bad thing, because when you look up, what are you going to see? You're going to see Jesus standing there with his hand out to hold you up. To pull you up out of the mud, to pull you up out of the mire. Because that's the promise that God has given to us. Because when Jesus was in the wilderness, with the wild beasts, being tempted by, Jesus, by Satan, who was there with him? What did Mark say? The angels, the spirits, the angels were there with him, tending to him, helping him. Even Jesus didn't go to the desert alone. So you're not going to go there either. God is always with you. So as we go out into this world to face the trials, to face the dangers, to face life that comes at us, and all the choices that come, Use your will and your understanding of who God is and the promises that He's made to you to make the right choices to show forth His love. But when you don't, know that He's going to be there to pick you back up, dust you off, and push you back out the door to get you going again. Because that's what He does. He loves you so much that He endured what you have, what you endured. He went through what all of us go through so that He can understand how we live, and how we need Him. So don't worry about everybody else. 
focus on yourself and God and go out into the world to make the choices that he set before you to bring his love, grace, and mercy to all the world.